here we have a map of Scotland. Glasgow, East Kilbride. A long time ago, I decided to travel from Glasgow to um, this point here. No, that was where I camped, to this point here, which is Durness. There's a lighthouse there. And so I had a bicycle, which was my transport. And a tent, which was my accommodation. And I had some food, which was just packets or tins, which I was carrying with me. And the holiday itself, in a lot of ways, didn't really cost very much. It was for 30 days. A 30-day adventure. I hadn't really seen much of Scotland, if anything. So I thought I would, I would see it by a, by using a bicycle. And then I was camping out every night in the wilds. So I was connected to nature and occasionally I would buy some tins of food, whatever, out of a little shop. And I had a little uh, gas stove with these wee capsules, canisters she's put in it and I had a small one, it was a half size one because I was very aware of what I, what I had on the bike I had £60 worth of stuff on the bike in weight so I had cooking facilities, food, accommodation, transport and it wasn't going to cost me much more than it would be if I was at home because I wasn't paying for any accommodation and I was only incurring the cost of food, say and uh, that meant that it wasn't really cost me anything so this means I could extend it for a month and uh, I made a decision I made a decision to not be in contact with anything during the tour of Scotland and I would um, I ended up I travelled 1000 miles but I didn't have any you know, no mobile phones in those days and I didn't have I made a decision not, not to read any newspapers or periodicals and I didn't even have a radio with me so I um, was totally off grid, totally out of contact with everyone. No connection, no means of contact, and not even listening to the news from a radio. A couple of people I met on a journey, other cyclists were surprised that I didn't at least have a radio with me. They just thought that was further than what they would be willing to do. So I started off from the centre of Glasgow and pointed my bicycle north. And I then thought a thousand mile trip starts with one revolution of your pedals, so I'll just keep pedalling. I thought to myself, eventually I will get to Durness 
lighthouse and then I'll make my way back to over here uh, uh, or there, don't feel one that's how I was going to end up back there so it was the, the, the tourist route, the long route so I set off and from, from Central Station in Glasgow then I went up to Buchanan Street Station and I distinctly remember I was standing in a lane get myself prepared because I was going to be heading out north from Glasgow that night and there was this cat came up to get help and attention from me and I, I felt horrible I feel horrible to this day that I had to abandon this cat and I can't get the memory out of my mind as I was cycling away I was standing in this horrible cobblestoned alleyway full of filthy bins and all that sort of stuff I didn't have these wheelie bins in those days just so these tin bins and things it was a mess and this cat was appearing with expectant eyes and I had to let, leave it behind and as I cycled away I looked back and it was, it was staring at me so I, I went out uh, cycled through uh, Bishop Briggs heading north out of Glasgow and ended up in the at the base of the Campsy Fells right on, on a stream next to a stream and I camped there overnight then I, I carried on this was mid-June into mid-July so it was very long days I chose the time of the year for maximum light so I carried on cycling and camping out covering each night covering maybe 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 miles a day just depending on what I wanted to do and carried on I don't remember encountering Loch Lomond so I must have came along down this way somewhere in here and along so after the the camps is the next place I remember was um, Aberfoyle and I remember sitting there and it was a uh, quite pleasant and I was sitting here in a, a public park in Aberfoyle that was like day two and then I carried on up this way and along here and uh, just trying to get my bearings and uh, through place called Tindrum, Tindrum and then I cycled through Bridge of Orkey over the bridge itself and I camped, um, made a big campfire at the bottom of Ben Moore which I think is a Monroe, it's over 3,000 feet it's a fairly nondescript big round hill, mountain 3,000 feet, I camped at the foot of that and that's where I actually decided to lie on the railway uh, sleep overnight on it and I then headed up here and around the devil's elbow and um, over Rannoch Moor about 1200 feet up so I must have been over, this must be in Rannoch Moor here Rannoch Moor and I then uh, headed over to Glen Nevis, Ben Nevis and Spain Bridge Fort William and then I headed along Loch Lochy, beautiful part here remember, I remember this part of the journey because I fell off my bicycle and I got really battered up and bruised but I never had a first aid kit so I just got some bits of paper that I found and string a newspaper and just tied it tied it around my knees to stop the blood and uh, I carried on, on on the other side the east side of Loch Ness which goes through a place called uh, Foyers it's a power station 
power generating hydropower. So I went on the east side, not the main road side of Loch Ness, which was beautiful. The other side, much better. And I remember coming into Inverness, I camped out in some woods six miles south of Inverness, and I couldn't get my tent pitched. It was bracken, and I couldn't get the, the, the tent pegs in, so I just had to lie outside hoping it wouldn't rain. And I was really starving. I'd been cycling about 80 miles that day. I was so hungry, but I couldn't get any food anywhere, so it was about 11 o'clock at night, it was still really bright light, and I couldn't pitch a tent, so I just had a Mars bar, but I could have done with a slap up meal. I remember coming into Inverness in the morning, and I was looking for the public toilets in the centre so I could have a wash and brush up, and I just remember it just seemed to me as if the place was crowded, and people were speaking in a strange tongue. It's just a perception, when you're away from everything, I just thought Inverness was a bustling place and then there was no that's a bridge now the Keswick Bridge massive big bridge with phenomenal amount of traffic but that, that didn't exist at the time so I had to find how to get across here and this wee ferryman was down the pub somewhere and he turned up after a couple of hours and like a wee rowing boat type of thing I got on this wee boat it only had enough room for me and a couple of bicycles or something like that and I went over here and uh, to the other side to Keswick and I carried uh, carried on through uh, Muir of Ord and I remember that because I, I broke a wheel I, I came down this steep hill and hit a pothole and my back axle and wheel just broke so I spent the next day trying to find a bicycle shop somewhere to get a, a back wheel replacement or a hub. I remember this shop, I was in a bicycle shop, and this guy looked like Ricky Fulton. He spoke with this almost like a kid on accent. And I was, I was negotiating, trying to buy buy a wheel off of him. Then I carried on uh, through the Corrie Shallot Gorge and to our pool which was fantastic there. It cycled. It's a really steep hill as you go out. That's Loch, that's, that's Loch Broom, I think. Or Little Loch Broom. I think that one there is Loch Broom. Cycled out. Really steep hill. About five miles up and you get the absolute phenomenon. I always remember that Ardmore Bay. And you can see the the Coigach, Benmore Coigach Ridge. Fantastic. Never seen anything like it. I was seeing all this for the first time on a bicycle and uh, going at what almost like stage coach pace. So you felt every every kind of uh, elevation and how and nuance. And I headed up, kept going north, just point my bike north, keep going, keep going. Eventually I got to somewhere, I think it's called Keodale, and that's Sango Sands. And there's um no that's that's actually a Loch Erie ball there. That's Sango that's Sango Sands there and that's there's a campsite I camped there in I thought it was a bit of a wimp, but this was a campsite which I could use as showers and stuff. Uh, but I still wasn't inside. And then I uh, got some sort of ferry Again, it was just like a rowing boat and go over here. And it was 11 miles then from this point to the lighthouse. And I uh, went into the lighthouse and introduced myself as a guy they used to hear on the phone. They used to speak to these lighthouse keepers. And I came back down and... Uh, I seem to remember Loch Shin. I'll try to work out how I got to uh, over here. Because at some point I was cycling right along Loch Shin because it was a very moody there and really creepy. And I was getting 
extremely depressed and every time I passed anywhere it was black and I thought this place is giving me the spooks there was really black houses and black cars and everything was black and I thought the whole place was haunted and I was getting really depressed and quite scared and then I thought why is everything black around here and I saw a phone box and I thought well that can't be black and it was the phone box was actually black the only time I've ever encountered that and that scared the bejesus out here so I tried to get away from this place and I headed back over um, this way and that's a bit, that's an incredible wilderness there I was on these tiny wee tracks and I came across here and uh, just trying to get my bearings here uh, so I came across here and I must have went around Loch Hugh and Grunyard Bay spooked me as well because there's anthrax on there in I think on that island there they, they were doing experiments with anthrax during World War Two, and it was still contaminated so I was staring at that and it was making me weak at the knees just thinking of this island as, as a World War Two experimental place and then I came all the way around this coast all the way around here so I was really clocking up the miles I had a wee mileometer a wee gauge on the bicycle and I made my way all around here on tiny wee tracks and then got on the ferry to here oh, at Kyle Lockhouse um, I was also down Ellen Donning Castles around about there and Balmacara camping there and I went on the ferry that's Elgol Peninsula there and the Coolins are here from the south east and that's Elgol where Ian Anderson owns quite a large part of that. he had a fish farm there so I came on here and went, went uh, they came, there was a cross roads here and I was going to go to Poor Tree or and I thought I can go another way or I'll go clock up some more miles so I went down here and I camped out uh, here it's Glen Barreto I camped here and I thought the next day I'll maybe go to the old manor store and the old manor store is um, is here somewhere that store ridge is around about there and I was here the complete extreme other point. So what I did was I left my sleeping bag on on the rails here on a fence on a, a fence and thought oh that would give it a nice airing. It was right out to sea and get so that when I come back I can get a nice dry sleeping bag. That didn't happen when I came back my sleeping bag was absolutely sodden with sea spray. So what I did was the next day I cycled all along the Elgol Peninsula all the way up here and there's an incredible hill this bit this is almost, almost about 5 miles my legs are hurting just thinking about up, up this hill to poor tree but that time I'd covered 40 miles and I met a guy I knew from school in a campsite here and he said where are you heading for? I said I'm heading up to the store the old manor store from there to there he says you realise how far away it is on a bicycle? He says, you, can, you never make it, it's too far away. I said, I just came, I just came from there to here. And I'm going back as well, and I'm going to do the ridge. So I headed up here, and then I walked up to the old man's store, and touched it. I didn't climb up it. And I then went along the whole store ridge, and came back down, cycled all the way back down here. To, to where I was camping thinking great get some grub down me and get a good night's rest with um, a fantastic dry sleeping bag all nice and aired but it was, it was sodden absolutely sodden and then I couldn't get a wink of sleep that night and it was really windy and my really cheap tent only cost me about 20 quid was rubbish and the guy ropes and all that were all strained and it, I felt like I was getting punched all night because it was bending in the wind 
and I felt like someone was just mildly punching me in the face with a with a boxing glove all through the night. And then uh, I headed uh, back off of Sky, back over the ferry, and I headed right over this kind of way and made my way down this stile down the east side, heading right down to Dunfermline. So when I when I looked at my mileometer after the whole journey, it was uh, a thousand miles, and that's what I was trying to do. So I'd been outside for each all all day. You were outside and all night. You're just lying on the land. You're never inside anywhere. So what was happening is that. If I actually walked into what, what there was always little small shops, I was just buying buying some food or something. And when I went into these tiny wee shops on route, I used to feel dizzy and claustrophobic because I was so used to being outside all the time that um, when I went inside somewhere, I started to feel like very stifled and claustrophobic and I had to get out of the shop very quickly. So it was about uh But what happened was, because I was very close to nature, I felt everything very vividly. And I remember being obsessed by water. So I used to always have a wee water bottle um, with me, full of water, because I thought I feared running out of water. And I used to stare at the water and see it as magical, this bottle of clear water. So every time there was a stream that was nearby, I used to fill my water bottle up. <laughs> 